this is Angela Anderson. In this video I'm going to be boldly going where no man has gone before, showing you how to paint a Star Trek Galaxy badge with acrylics. My artist friend and fellow Trekkie, Clive Powell from Clive 5 Art, have both created Star Trek fan art paintings for you in honor of the new movie coming out in a couple of weeks. So after this video, please be sure to pop on over to Clive's channel and check out his awesome Star Trek Enterprise painting. The link is in the description below. Hope you enjoy our little collaboration, and as always, please leave a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and share with all your tricky friends. Let's get started. Our palette colors for today's project are Dioxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, Cobalt Teal, Thalo Green, Cadmium Yellow Light, Burnt Sienna, Cadmium Red Light, Cadmium Red Medium, and Quinacridone Magenta. We also have two whites that we'll be using. This is titanium white and zinc white. If you don't have zinc white, that's fine. Uh, it's just a little bit more transparent for some of the things that we're going to be doing. Thought it might be helpful. Our brushes are also listed down in the description and we'll be using a fan brush, a stippler two of two sizes. This is a small deer foot stippler quarter inch and a small number two round stiff bristle brush a small spotter or liner brush, a number four round brush, and a 3 8 inch angle brush. So I've started out by prepping my canvas with a coat of ultramarine blue. And I've gone a little bit darker in some areas to give it a little bit of depth already. Okay, so I'm going to use chalk to sketch out my design onto my canvas. So basically, you're going to start at the top here and do a large curved line go all the way down to the bottom of the canvas here. Stop about an inch or about a thumb width from the bottom. Then do the same thing on the other side. We really want to use up almost all of the width of the canvas if we can. We'll leave a, about an inch on either side. This side is going to end a little bit shorter than the other side, kind of at an angle there. Then we're going to do a large swooping line that kind of angles up this way. And then at the half point mark, if you kind of figure out the halfway mark, you're going to go a couple inches past that and then curve it down and meet it up with that bottom angle. You can look at some Star Trek pictures, um, download something online, or um, I will have a traceable for this in my Thankful Art group that you can download too if you want it. I think I'm going to make a little bit bigger area right here. So I'm just taking a damp cloth and wiping that chalk off. And I think I'm going to make that angle a little bit less severe so that there's more of this galaxy showing because all of this background area here now is going to be covered up. Um, the only part that we'll be seeing is this area right here in the middle. So let me check. I did a drawing beforehand, so I'm just going to check it against my drawing here and see how I did. It looks pretty decent. I went a little bit wider than I had in my drawing, but I think I like it. You look. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so then inside of this design, I'm going to do the Andromeda Galaxy. So I'm going to start out with an oval. And I kind of just want it right smack dab in the middle. It's a little bit off from center, but about halfway this way. So if you find the halfway mark, come just below it with that circle and then just to one side of the center mark this way. So just right about there. And then I'm going to angle my spirals in this direction. So I'm going to do spirals. Keep them pretty flat, close together here, but wide on either end here so that it gets longer as you go and stays pretty narrow right here. I think that looks good. Well, let's put a, let's see, we'll do a moon or something right here too. 
And then maybe another one up here, another couple, something up there. And then a couple different ones right there and there. Okay. And that'll be our galaxy sketch. That's all the sketching we're going to do. And I'm just going to grab my angle brush here and start to lay in the center of my galaxy with a little bit of white. I'm using heavy body acrylics. But you can use whatever kind of acrylics you happen to have. So I'm laying in my color and then I'm wiping off the extra. I'm just going to blend around using the tip of my brush. I'm not worried too much about this at this point. I'm just kind of trying to lay in a little bit of color. We'll go over this with other colors as we progress. Let me zoom in so you can see it really well. There we go. So when Clive and I came up with this idea to do the Star Trek collab, I was really excited because I've been wanting to do some sort of a galaxy type idea and actually his idea and my idea were very similar I was gonna do like well I got a sneak peek I won't tell you what his looks like in case you haven't seen it already but it's really cool and it kind of includes some planets and different things and so when I heard he wanted to do that I thought well I'll do the Star Trek symbol now of course if you're not a Star Trek fan and you just want to do this on a canvas here you can leave out the outline and just do this on your canvas. Um, I've added a little bit of the yellow, cadmium yellow light, and I'm just dry brushing in some really kind of light touch with this. I'm laying down some color and then just spreading it out until there's no color left on my brush. So it kind of does this little wispy thing and you can see the background colors through it. So I added the cadmium yellow light to my white, my regular titanium white. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the cadmium yellow or cadmium red light and mix it with that color there and add a little bit of that to the outer edges. I'm just going to lay some light colors down. It's going to look really weird at first, so don't worry too much. We're going to do several layers with this, so um, if this does not look all that great at first, we'll just have to trust that we'll get there eventually. <laughs> I'm going to grab, let's go ahead and grab some of the cadmium red. We'll mix that in. We still have all these other colors on our brush so that they're sort of blending together and I'm just going to kind of do a rainbow effect and get it as I go out. I'm going to switch from the yellow to the orangey reds to the red and the brighter pinks and then to purple and blue. Let's grab some quinacridone magenta now. And I might add just a little bit more white since we've kind of used up all of our white from beginning there. Let's just make it a little bit lighter. And keep on adding our colors in here. Add a little water to my brush. Give me a very light touch. If you get a really dark area like that, don't worry about it. Just kind of keep on going. And then once the color is all out of your brush, you can wipe it off. You can always go back in and kind of lift off some of the thicker areas if you get too much paint down. But right now I'm not really too concerned because we can cover up anything that we don't like. All right, let's see, let's grab some purple now. And that a pretty color. 
And we'll add some purple to our outer areas of this galaxy. I used NASA to find pictures for my inspiration. So if you go to the NASA website, there's a lot of really great images on there. This was the Andromeda 2 galaxy that I was looking at. Just really liked the spiral effect and I thought it would look really nice inside the logo here. So we'll see if we can get it to look like I was hoping. I always got kind of an idea of how things are going. They sometimes with painting they just you kind of have to just go with the flow. <laughs> doesn't always come out the way you have in your head but sometimes it comes out better so we're just gonna hope for the best I've never painted a galaxy before so I'm just gonna try to figure it out as I go here you're gonna see my process of figuring out how to make it work okay I think that's good now I'm gonna start adding more blue up a little bit more water and grab some ultramarine blue mix that with my purple color still have a little bit of white in there too make a light blue color okay going to do some kind of choppy little brush strokes here. I may have to switch to my other brush here pretty soon. Just letting the tip of my brush sort of make some sort of draggy shapes. That's a technical term. Draggy. <laughs> Just kind of holding my brush so that the tip is kind of facing down toward the canvas and just changing the direction as I'm maybe like figure eights so that I'm making these kind of random circular motions and making the clouds sort of wisp out along the edges there. I don't want to do too much really uh, heavy work with the angle brush because I don't want to ruin the tip of it so don't scrub too hard with it. Let's see, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my stiplers. That way I don't damage my good brush here. And this is a Deerfoot stippler. And like I said, if you don't have this brush, you can use whatever you happen to have. I'm going to grab some more of the white and just a tiny bit of the yellow to brighten it up. Then I'm going to blot it off on my paper towel so that I don't have very much paint on there at all. I'm just going to tap it into the center of my galaxy here. Is it a galaxy or is it just a star system? I don't really know. I guess I should know the difference. Let me have to look it up. My husband's the NASA fanatic in our family. He wanted to be an astronaut, but he... Yeah had a heart murmur so he couldn't, couldn't get into the program unfortunately. Okay, there we go. Just use it to kind of scrub out. That's going to look really nice I think. We'll do some more layers on it but right now I think I'm going to go ahead and keep on working out here and adding more and more of our details in. So let's Grab some of these turquoisey blues. Now this is thalo blue and white. Uh, here again, you always want to kind of tap off some of that color so that it doesn't go on too dark. I'm just going to tap using the very tip of it. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush here. Uh, I'm just going to make some little space clouds or whatever these things are here in my outer edges with the teal the yellow blue color with white
trying to kind of keep in mind my general shape of my system here, keep that spiral look about it. And just using the tip to sort of draw out some random cloud shapes. Add a few little bits of it in the center areas just for a pop of color. We'll cover most of it up, but it'll help kind of with the continuity to have a little bit of this cloud color going all the way through to the center there. All right, let me zoom out so you can see what it's looking like so far. Okay, so that's pretty good. Really cool. All right, let's go ahead and kind of do some random stuff up here. I think I'll grab this cobalt teal. If you don't have the cobalt teal color, it's just a premixed color that I like to use. Um, but it can be mixed with phthalo green and phthalo blue. So just tapping in some of these cloud shapes kind of don't want to get them too close to this because I want them to look like they're sort of in their own little area but I do want something going on in these areas up in the corners so just using a little bit of that color there let's go ahead and use some of the orange orangey red color here this is that light cadmium red so let's put in a little bit of that right along the edge here nice and bright I'm kind of losing my edge there a little bit but I can draw that in back in later just want a little pop of color right there and maybe I'll make a little bright star right there with that color. I just set it down and kind of dragged it in a circle. There we go. Clean that color out. And pick up a little bit of burnt sienna. This will be one of my sort of detail colors. I'm going to use this to sort of draw these little brown cloud shapes that um, happen. Just picked up a little bit of brush and I'm going to use the tip of my deer foot. It's pointed on one end. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. And I'm going to use it to drag along that spiral shape just to really define it. Starting out not quite at the very center of my circle and I'm just going to make a large spiral shape. with the burnt sienna. Okay, now I'm going to pick up my purple. This will make a nice dark, deep color. Purple is almost reads black when you're layering it with other colors like this. I'm going to use that to tap in some of my cloud shapes. This will really give us some depth. So just 
tapping in and scrubbing out some of this color. Going in some of those areas where I did the burnt sienna color and darkening them up even a little bit more. It's looking really weird right now. So you're just going to have to trust the process. It's going to look weird until it looks better. Every painting has an ugly stage, I call it, and we are pretty ugly right now. But just keep pushing through. We'll get there. Just keep adding more and more layers, and we'll eventually get to where we want to be. I'm going to add some of this purple down into this area here in between these spots to really darken it up. Maybe add some down toward the bottom there. Oops. Off camera. Sorry about that. Let's do some up at the top here too. Just scrubbing in a little bit of this purple. right up next to those light clouds it'll really make them pop forward gotta have contrast to get some depth okay I think we're good I'll clean that out And let me grab my number four round now. Zoom out just a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to grab my white here. Go straight white this time and do a really bright dot right in the center of that galaxy where we want it brightest. And then I'm just going to let the color kind of drag off my brush to sort of do a halo effect. Good. All right, now I'm going to grab this zinc white. This is the transparent white. I'm just going to use this to soften up some of these areas. It's going to show through my colors but we can layer on top of this other colors here and you'll see it sort of blends them out softens them a little bit now if you don't have this color you can just add a little bit of white or a little bit of water to your titanium white it'll get a similar effect Titanium white is very opaque though. It really covers well, so the zinc white is nice for this effect. I'm just going to use it in some of these outer areas here. Just to make our like storm clouds a little bit softer along the edges. Don't go over everything, just some of your brightest areas. If you see an area that looks a little bit harsh, throw a little bit of this color over the top of it and it'll really help blend it out, soften it up a little bit. Doesn't it look cool? It's already starting to look a little spacey in it. Keep on adding this color. And I could use my scrubber brush too if I wanted to. That would work just fine. 
try not to go over my darkest areas too much with this. I kind of want to leave some of them. But I'm kind of targeting those in-between areas with this color. Just to soften up a little bit of that transition between the really dark and the really light areas. And we can go over this now with the wash of some other color and add some color back in. Like I said, this will be several layer painting to get the effect that we want. But I think it'll be worth it in the end. Just using the tip of my brush to make these kind of random light wash shapes. It's looking really good. Okay, let's go down here and sort of add some highlights to our nebula down here. We need to add some more colors to it still. And let's get up here with this one and add some white to the center of him. I think there's also a little white spot in this galaxy here. There and down in here somewhere. This one's kind of a shape like that. And let's do another bright star sort of up in here somewhere. We'll make it a little bit smaller than this one. And go back in with some yellow now. Add some yellow in this guy to really brighten that up. Just using the tip of my brush to drag some circular color out. And let's use some yellow down here too. Just to kind of unify the painting, it'll help to have this yellow in multiple places. Just going to drag it and make some random shapes down in here. And I did want to do a planet like right in here somewhere. So I still want to do that. Let's go ahead and draw it in with our white. We'll start working that in to our design. Starting to really take shape. I like it. I feel like we need something down here so I think I'm just going to put like a, another little star shape down here. Just start one. We'll add more detail later to that. <clears throat> okay, let me grab my brush now. I think I want to do a like a highlight. So I think I want to do this planet where this dark area is butting up against this nebula here and then it's got a light side closest to this. So I'm just going to fill in this back side with purple and then grab a little bit of white and blend it together and then fill in this other side with the tip that has the white and make a little highlight side just keeping that light color right along the edge there. If you load your brush with the light color just on the tip you can kind of get this highlight effect just on one side like that. Good. Looking good. Really like it. Okay. Let's go ahead and use this color. And since we've got this brush out we'll use this purple I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of white. Keep it pretty dark, though. And let's go back in here. Just a little bit of water. Let's go 
go back in here and really define our galaxy shape again. Now that we've already gotten a few layers on there, we're really going to be able to start getting our detail worked in. I'm just using the tip of my brush, very little paint. You can see that there's not a whole lot of paint on there. And I've kept it really nice and sharp edged, and I'm just going to barely use the tip of it to sort of stipple in my line. So this line is going to go all the way to this here and come around. There's another line that kind of comes in like this close by. Actually, I need to make a little bit more space for it right here. So this one. Added a little bit of white to my brush here. Just trying to define my shape really well so that I get it looking right. And just softening up the purple edge, blending it out a little bit with the white that I have in my brush. There we go. <coughs> <coughs> So that one is going to go all the way out to there and then come back around. And then go back around this way and meet up over here. Let me grab some quinacridone magenta now. And I'm going to add a little bit of this in some of these areas where that purple is. And a little bit of water and a little bit of white. <clears throat> and I'm going to brighten up this area here. I feel like these purple lines got a little too close together right there. Just add a little bit more of this pinky color. And that area there. Let's add a little bit of it on the other side too. Grab some of the burnt sienna and some of the purple. A little bit of the quinacridone magenta. It's going to make like this really dark reddish brown color. So a little bit of quinacridone magenta, a little bit of the purple and a little bit of the burnt sienna. Let me zoom out a little bit. Wow, that's looking really cool. Really cool. Okay, so let's add a little bit of this color down here. Add a little bit of water so that it's thinned out. I just want to add some shadow to the back side of this nebula here and I think I'm going to take my Deerfoot stippler and just scrub it so that it softens it up. There we go. I'm 
let's add a little bit of it along the edges of this galaxy here. And in some of our darkest areas, I really want to go thick with my paint and really put in some really fine dots kind of all mashed up together. Let me zoom in again. If you can see that. Okay. Just a little bit of paint at my brush. At this point, I'm just adding some random lines. Then I'm going to come back in with my deer foot and scrub them out to soften them up. This is just a clean, dry deer foot stippler. You can add just a teeny tiny bit of water to it just to soften up the bristles, but I don't want it to have water in the... I want it to lift off the paint. So if it's getting too if it's getting too dry, add a tiny bit of water, but not too much because you don't want it to be sopping up your paint. You just want it to be softening the edges a little bit. That's looking really nice. Okay, and there's a few little random kind of wispy things that happen in some of that lighter area there. really good. I'm going to put a little bit of this color up here around the outsides of this galaxy on top of that teal color. Just unify it a little bit. Alright, I think I'm going to use my phthalo blue and a little bit of the white. Keep my color really dark. Just using the white to lighten it up just a tad. Wipe that off so that it's not too bright. And I'm just going to use it to go along the outer edges. Oh, look at how pretty that color is. Just add a little bit of this really bright blue. Scrubbies. You can even use your paper towel if you want to, to kind of scrub it out. Maybe a little tiny bit of it in my galaxy here. I want to leave a nice dark area right here though, so I don't want it to get too bright everywhere. Let's go back in now with my ultramarine blue and go over some of those areas and just kind of soften and blend them together. Just adding one more layer. And if at any time you get a little bit too much of any one color in some place, you can always grab your ultramarine blue and kind of tap back over and help correct 
any little areas that need help. It's looking really nice. I'm getting close to being done here. A few more little layers and I think we'll be good. Just scrubbing out. And grab some of the purple and do the same thing with that. If your brush gets really, really dry and your paint's getting sticky, you can add just a tiny, tiny bit of water to it. But with the deer foot, you really want to keep it mostly dry. Take the water back out of it now that I've hydrated it. Get a little bit of that purple. And go in here with the purple one. Scrub out some of those outer edges. Okay, so now I need one more layer of my lighter color on this center here. I'm making sure that I've got all of that purple out of my brush that I can get out. Wash it really well. And actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and switch to my little small round brush here for this. This is a scrubber. got this but it's a stiff bristled brush so that will be good for dry brushing. I've got just a little bit of paint on my brush here and I'm just going to tap it down in the center and then rub it out around the outside of that to give it kind of a soft halo effect. When you're dry brushing like this, you just want to make sure that you don't over blend in one area. If you keep kind of going back over one area over and over again, the paint will lift off your canvas. You don't want that to happen. So when you're dry brushing, just kind of tap it in and brush it out. You can always go back in later and add more color, but you really don't want to over blend a certain area. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in here and add some streaks with this brush. Just a little bit of paint on my brush here. And I'm just going to lightly drag it. Add a little bit of brightness to this star thing here. And then another one right here. There was another one that kind of came this direction. Tap a little bit of color in and then sort of scrub out around it. If it doesn't come off well enough at first, just kind of let that set. And I always come back in and add more later. Okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit of this white. Let's grab some of that transparent white again, the zinc white, and add a little bit of it. Just scrubbing. Maybe add a little bit of this cobalt teal color. in this outer area here. Into some kind of horizontal clouds 
coming off. Where they're just kind of angled, they're not really horizontal. This is why you want these stiff bristle brushes, because you really have to scrub to get work this paint down into the canvas. You don't want to do this with one of your nicer brushes, because you could really damage it. Okay, I think that's good. Let's go ahead and grab some yellow. And we'll put a little bit of a halo around this guy here. And a little bit extra white right in the center there. Let's do another one right here. Just kind of scrub in some little cloud shapes. This is going to be really fun once we get our splatters in here because that'll really add the last kind of effect to it. Okay, I'm going to grab some more of this yellow and I want to add some of it, mixing it with my white a little bit. And I really want to add a little bit of this in around. Look at how bright that is. Very pretty. Around the outside of my center here. Keep it close to the center. How pretty that's looking. Okay, let's grab some of this red. This is the cadmium red light, that orangey red color. And put some of that in as well. This is where we can really start adding in some of these colors now that we've got some of that white underneath. These upper layers of color will really pop. No. Really pretty. And let's add some regular cadmium red, medium. Just a little bit of white in it to soften it. I don't want to overpower a painting. I think I'm going to use it in some of these darker shaded areas just to kind of add another layer of interest in some of those areas around the purple. This is really fun. Let's add some of this red down here too. And a little bit of it up here at the top, just along this upper area here. Maybe around the outside of our star thing that's going on there. Looking really cool. Oops, I hope I got that on camera. There we go. And let's go with some pink. This is that quinacridone magenta, a little bit of white. And we'll tap in some really bright pink cloud shapes to define some of these areas. Just tapping, making little random shapes.
Right, let me grab some of this burnt sienna. I'm going to use it to sort of scrub in just a little bit of detail around the center there. I'm going to go back in with my white and yellow. And scrub back over that just a little bit to soften it up. it's just kind of a matter of touching up and making little small adjustments. I think I want some blue cloud color so I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and some white and make a really soft white blue color. And make sure you got all of that white out of your brush or that yellow out of your brush so that it doesn't make it a green. Although there's nothing wrong with green. I actually haven't used my phthalo green. I need to use it. So maybe I'll do that. Just using this brush, this smaller brush kind of allows me to get in here and get some smaller details in. Always trying to just keep in mind this circular cloud shape here so that I don't go over any of my important lines that are creating that spiral. brighten up just a few of these areas like as if some lights hitting them or something all right we are doing good here I think So I'm just trying to find a few little areas to add some of this lighter blue color. I think that looks really good. Let me go in with some of this pink now. Some really bright highlights just in a few little areas here. The 
This is just quinacridone magenta and white, but really bright. Okay, so I'm just There we go. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm just going to lay in a few shadows with my angle brush. I'm going to grab some of the purple and thin down my purple a little bit with water. And then go back over some of this and make sure that they're dry. You don't want to go over anything that's really wet. but. These have had a chance to kind of set for a little bit, so they're okay. And I'm just going to kind of soften up some of this color with a little bit of a wash of purple. Darken up some areas. If you want something, an area a little bit darker, you can add a little bit more of the purple. If you want it just a tint, you can just use barely any little bit more water. Looking really nice. Use a little bit of wash of that purple up in here, too. Okay, I'm going to brighten up this edge of my planet there. So I'm going to grab purple, load it in my brush, and then pick up just a little bit of the white on the tip and blend that in on my palette so that I have the light color just on the tip. I'm just going to run that along that leading edge of that planet to give it a nice bright highlight. There we go. We're good. And grab some ultramarine blue and go in here with the ultramarine blue and add just a little bit of extra color in some areas too. Darken up some of these shadowy areas around the outside of our galaxy. With just a little bit of watered down paint. It's 
so you can see through the details, but you're just changing the tint of the color. Okay, we're almost to the splattering, which is my favorite part. Let me zoom out. Super cool. How fun is that? Okay, I think I just need a little bit more of the bright white on some of my stars. So I'm going to grab some white. my brush so I don't have too much. Just find my little star areas here. Scrub in a little bit more white. To brighten them up. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to add my little spotter brush now. Use my spotter. And I'm going to make some little star shapes in my bright stars here. So I'm just kind of making some cross pieces very, very lightly I'm using this really fine liner brush to sort of make these look like they're, they have like a star thing happening. Just lightly dragging it. There we go. I feel like that one got a little bit off center. Maybe I need to bring it down a little bit. There we go. Cool. Let's do it down here too. Just find the center of that star and do a vertical line and a horizontal line. That'll make it really pop. There we go. I feel like I need one right in here. Just gonna do a little bit of a circle right there. Okay, let's splatter some stars. Now we've got to add our enterprise. Let's zoom out. So fun. I'm loving this so much. This is really fun. You have to try it. It's awesome. All right, so I'm going to start with yellow. I'm going to do my stars in a few different colors. I'm going to water down with this fan brush. I just find that fan brush works really well for this splattering. You can use a toothbrush or even just a regular brush if you want to. I'm going to hold it up here and I'm just going to tap it with my finger. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? 
Okay, so not too many with the yellow because I want to go back in with some white and add some white also. So fun. Actually, let's add some pink. Pink stars. The key is to add enough water to make the paint like drippy. You want it to just fall off your brush. We'll splatter a few pink stars. If you get it in an area where you don't want it, you can just tap it off. They'll come right off while they're wet. All right, now for our white stars. I may need some fresh white for this, I think. I've run out. I want our stars to be nice and bright white. If you wanted larger splatters, you could use a larger brush. The larger the brush, the more the size of your spirals will get bigger and bigger. And the more water you use, the bigger your spatters. I don't want this guy to have splatters over the top of him, so I'm just going to dab them off with a damp rag. There we go. Just make sure that your undercoat is dry before you do this, and that way you can dab off any areas that you want to clean up. How fun is that? I'm going to grab my large flat brush that I use for my background. And you can use whatever color you want to for this. I'm just going to go ahead and cover my background with some white, I think. So, or you could use that you could leave the blue and just kind of clean up your edges however you wanted to do it. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use this white. I need a little bit more of the splatters down here. I'm going to add a little bit more of those. Okay. Now I'm going to use that splatter, and I think I want to add a nice bright star right in here somewhere. So just use your small brush there and add a couple more little random larger splatters here and there. And you can make them little star shapes if you want.
just brightening up. Now that the paint is drying, I can see that some of these areas need a little bit more brighter. So I'm just going back in with my white. And brightening up some of my brightest areas there, just to really make it pop. I think I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of white along that outside edge of that planet, just a line of color, just to give it a little bit brighter highlight. <laughs> Okay, so I have two coats of white on here. I could probably do a third if I wanted to, but I don't mind seeing a little bit of the background showing through in places. And I think to finish it off, I want to put an enterprise and I want it to be coming out in this direction. So I'm just using my pencil to lightly sketch out and I'll zoom in on this area while I work on it. So you can see what I'm doing. Here, I want it to be kind of shooting out of our galaxy here. So I'm just going to make it very small. I'm just making an oval shape. And then a little bit of a tail and then a V and then two longer torpedo things or whatever those are or jets. So we're kind of seeing it from its side. And it's gonna be shooting out. Let me see if that's gonna be big enough. We can always make it a little bit bigger if we want to, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use my number four round. Actually, I'm going to use my spotter. I want to make sure that I get the details. I'm going to use this purple color. So that it's nice and dark. I want it just to look like a little silhouette of it. I don't need to put any details in it. You can leave this part out if you don't want to, but I just thought it needed a little enterprise. You gotta have an enterprise with the Star Trek thing, right? I'm shooting out off out of our galaxy there. Put a few little lines, maybe pick up a little bit of the blue, and just kind of make a little line like he's coming out of there. Just very light dry brush. Just going to scrub out this line right here. It's bothering me. It's so bright. Add a little bit of this turquoise color to it. Just soften that up a little bit. Okay, that's better. All right, I promise I'm done now. <laughs> I could go on for days with this. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you try it, please uh, share it with me on my thankful art page. The link to that is down in the description below. Be sure to check out Clive's awesome painting. He did the Enterprise, really large with some planets and stuff. It's really great. So pop on over to his channel 
After this, there's a link up in the iCard and down in the description of this video. Thank you so much to Clive. It's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And um, please, if you've enjoyed this painting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your tricky friends. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.